What's up, Scrollgers, and welcome to Duelist. Duelist is a relatively new CCG, which I expect a lot of ex-Scrollgers to congregate to. Uh, it's kind of similar to Scrolls in that it has a game board where you can move your creatures. So hopefully I can take my success that I used to conquer Scrolls and do well in this game. Um, it does look like it has a bright future. Right now it's an alpha, you'll need an alpha key to play, or maybe pre-alpha, I'm not sure. Um, I was, one of the developers from Duelist was kind enough to send me an alpha key to play, as well as 15 others that I can just give away on this channel. So comment below and I'll give you a key just so you can head right into it, but don't worry if you don't get one, you can easily get a key yourself just by going to the Duelist forums and just ask for one and I'm sure you'll get one. So you can see already a few badgers have joined the fun. And from what I've done so far, it is pretty fun. Um, there are daily quests. I always wish scrolls had uh, more daily quests like this. And then as you can see, this game is pretty competitive. Uh, so it's up my alley. Hopefully I can do well in this. There are, there are rank seasons. Um, actually, I think a rank season is every month, so it starts today. And you have your starting cards. Each of these is a faction. Like in Scrolls, you have the four factions, Growth, Energy, Order, and Decay. Uh, Duelist has six factions, Lionar, Songhai, Vitruvian, Abyssian, Magmar, and Vanar. I guess you start with a few cards in each faction. And a squad is just what they call decks in this game. Um, each squad is 40 cards. Not sure what crafting does. I didn't make a specific squad yet. I haven't got, gotten any packs of cards either. Uh, to get more cards, you have to spend spirit orbs. Um, and to get spirit orbs, you have to trade in your gold for spirit orbs, which I have not done yet. I have gold because I have done a bunch of the challenges, which are like the trials from scrolls. Uh, they're right in the training grounds here. Um, See, so I did all the ones of the checks I've done, and then I kind of got stuck over here. These are almost like spot the winds from scrolls. So forgive me if I'm comparing everything to scrolls, but it's still fresh in my mind, and that's the only other CCG I've really ever played. I guess I've played a tiny bit of Magic the Gathering and like one match of Hearthstone. But yeah, I got stuck here. I guess I'll finish these up eventually. And then we have ranks, the gauntlet. I think this is something kind of like judgment where it's like you draft a deck. Uh, sandbox mode, I think you just do whatever you want, practice with some stuff, but it's not like an AI match. I don't think there's a way to play against the, an AI. Uh, and there's no like quick match either. So to play against a, play a real match, I think I just have to head right into a ranked match. Unless Holofoil is online, I could play him. So, I want to show you guys a bit about the board and how the game works. Maybe you shouldn't watch this for me because I'm a beginner myself, I actually just started playing this game today, so I'm sure if you search up somewhere there's probably a better like, better guide about the game. Um, I'm looking at guys myself right now so I can uh, learn to be better. Uh, but I'll just show you basically how the game works, that I know I think. Uh, so this sandbox one, you can just choose whatever you want. So I'll just choose this faction. Seems like a beginner faction. See, so has units, spells, and artifacts. And I'll just play against this faction, sure. So keep in mind, sandbox mode, you play for both sides. So don't get confused. This is not what it would be like in a real match. So first, you have the mulligan. Uh, you start with three cards, and you can swap any of them. Um, for a random card. And this is a 1 drop, a 2 drop, and a 5 drop. I know I won't be able to play the 5 drop for a few turns, so may as well not start with that. So I will replace that and click confirm. So now I'll just do it for my opponent, uh, whatever. We'll replace two things for him. So you start with your 3 cards and you see what, uh, what your card was swapped with. Uh, so looks like um, now I have my 3 cards. And you're probably overwhelmed by the by the board here. So we'll just uh, tackle this slowly. It is, the game takes place on a five by nine tile 
board. The goal of the game is to destroy your opponent's general, and that is the creature that starts on the field when the game starts. Uh, usually it's the most health, I guess. Uh, this is the opponent's general. It's a Kaleos Xan uh, to attack 25 health. And this is my general, the Argeon High Main to attack 25 health. And you can see the health of the general also on top here. So that's really the main that's the main goal of the game to kill the opponent general and you win. So here we have the resources. You see, I think in this game you always start with two resources at the start of the game, so not zero like scrolls. Uh, that means you can cast two drops on turn one, so I could be able to play a Skyrock Golem. So the number there, the number in the blue diamond is the amount of resources it takes to cast or play the card. This is your hand down here, these are the three cards. There's six slots. Uh, you cannot have more than six cards in your hand. That's why it says for player two up here, uh, three of six. He has three cards of six total cards in his hand. Uh, the deck has 40 cards. I'm not sure what that numerator means, um, but total cards in the deck is 40. Uh, so now, what should I talk about? Should I talk about what happens on yeah, I'll just say what happens on each turn now. So every turn you're going to gain one resource in the denominator, just like scrolls, the uh, numerator is replenished every turn, uh, but you don't have to sacrifice resources every turn like scrolls. So every turn you'll just have another resource. So the next turn I'll have three or three resources to work with, then I'll have four or four resources, then five of five, then six of six, seven of seven, eight of eight, and finally nine of nine, and I don't think it goes any higher than that. So. Also, once per turn, you do have a sacrificing mechanic. Uh, this replace thing, you can drag a card onto there and it will get swapped with a different card in your deck. So it's just a quick sacrifice your scrolls. You just get one scroll or card. I'm going to make them stick a lot. And that's your little sacrificing. And lastly, every turn you draw two cards from your deck. So I guess in this game, it is fine to play two cards per turn because you'll always have a, you'll always have two more every turn. So by default, uh, mini these are called minions, and just differentiate them from your general. Both all the generals and minions by default uh, can move two tiles every turn, so it's highlighting all the possible spaces he can move. So let's just take our general, click on him, and you can move him in any of the uh, tiles uh, within two. So I'll just move him up two. And that, that he's all gray, that means he can't move anything for the rest of the turn. And then after you move or before you move, whatever you want, each creature every turn has a chance to attack. So there's no like countdown like in scrolls. Um, uh, a creature can attack in any of the nearby tiles. That is all these tiles, even the diagonal ones. So he can't attack, so he's just doing nothing this turn. Um, the anatomy of a card, pretty uh, simple. Has So the Silver Guard Squire has one attack, four health, three attack, two health. And yeah, and of course the generals have massive health. So... I'm just going to end the turn, and oh, no, I'll play something. Playing a minion, you can play it, you can play a minion anywhere on any of the nearby tiles of one of your own minions. So I'll play it right here. From what I've read, it's good to start diagonally because then you can reach this pillar the next turn or the mana spring the next turn which i'll talk about in a second so minion is, is exhausted so i guess it has summoning sickness you can't really move or attack on the same turn unless the card has haste or rush which is which is what it's called in this game uh so then i mean there is a zero cost uh 
an artifact here. Artifact is basically an enchantment for your general. Uh, doesn't look like we need to use it, and it costs zero anyway, so we can use it anytime. So may as well hold on to it for the surprise factor. So then, uh, blah blah blah, the opponent would go like, "This is kind of stupid. How there's I can't play against the AI." But yeah, if your opponent does stuff, plays whatever they want, uh, plays a spell, deals three damage, kills that. You know, normal stuff. So it does whatever they have to do, and then they end of the turn. All right. So then it's your turn again. And you see now the general can move again. Um, I drew two cards, a Hailstone Golem and a True Strike. Uh, now there are three of three resources I have to work with. And now I'll show you a bit about the Mana Springs. Mana Springs. So I'm going to move you right here moving two tiles and if you play something on top of the mana springs or if you play or if you just walk into it from a, with another minion or a general you gain plus one uh mana for the turn so this guy cost one but i still have three of three because i got one from the from the mass spring. So I guess these aren't a huge deal, but they will give you a bit of a boost early in the game. Um, I like how this one is pushed a tiny bit to the right. I guess that's to uh, mitigate the turn one advantage. Keep in mind this game, the player who goes first will always be on the left, unlike scrolls where you're always on the left, always the first player will go on the left. Uh, you could be on the right or the left. Um, and the player on the right will have will be a little closer to this mana spring to make up for them having to go second. And yeah, they both start with three cards. So he has so many fixes. He's a one four for one. I'll have to learn about what's normal stats for the uh, amount of resources each drop is in this game. And there's spells like this deal two damage to a minion. That's pretty simple. Um, I could take this Sunstone Bracers and sacrifice it, see what I get. And look, I got a uh, I got a minion I could play this turn. This is a 2-3, and it has an ability called Zeal. I looked at all the abilities. You can find stuff like this all on uh, the website for Duelist. Um, Zeal uh, is an ability activated when it's, it's uh, played next to your general, so... Like, you don't have to play it next to your general, it could be played on any nearby title of any of your uh, minions. But I'll just play it next to the general. And it has four attack right now, it's a little highlighted green because I guess it's increased. And don't get confused, in this game the buffs and the debuffs are shown in real time. They're changed on the card on the left side you see there. So. Yeah, so he is a 4 attack, 3 health guy right now. And now, I guess the last thing I really want to show you is the combat. So I'll just play, or I guess I'll move you, and then I'll play that. Alright, a 4-3 for 3. So then, the way combat works is you can attack anything in its oops you can attack any nearby tile not your own creatures but you can attack uh, any enemy in your as a nearby tile remember that it does count diagonals so i can deal damage there and unlike scrolls the defending creature will deal damage back to the attacking creature so this has 4 attack and 3 health, that has 4 attack and 3 health, so what do you know they're going to kill each other? So if I do this... You know, what I'll show you first is, uh, it's like this guy only has 1 attack, 3 health, that's 4 attack, and uh, this guy has 4 health, so what should happen is, if he attacks, he does 1 damage and he does 4 damage. So, my guy dies. But this does not get healed. This gets one less health. He had three health before, now he has two health. 
So it's not, unlike Magic the Gathering where you where all the creatures gain regenerate all their health every turn. Uh, these guys uh, are damaged and they stay damaged. Like scrolls. So now I could use my general to finish him off, moving up here, attacking him, and my general to take four damage, which of course is important because that means he's a little closer to winning the game. But I think board control is more important here. And then you can move up here and deal four damage to this general, and you'll take two damage yourself. And I think that is uh, about the basics of the game. Um, if you have any questions, you can ask me, you can look online at the forums. That's probably a better option because I don't really know a whole lot about this game. I am going to have to look, uh, look at the ranked matches, try to finish all the training rounds, learn strategies, and read up online. Maybe I'll watch some other streamers there youtubers about this game and i hope uh you all play this game with me and i think it's gonna be pretty fun so that'll be it uh like the video if you enjoyed subscribe for more content and i will see you next time